And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The book of Revelation is full of symbolism, and thus we must search the scriptures to define it and not give our own opinion as to what something may be. So what is a beast, and who does this woman represent? Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. The Word of God has faithfully represented a beast as a kingdom or a nation, and a woman is represented as a church or the bride of Christ. In Revelation chapter 12, we find a pure and wholesome woman or church who is the bride of Christ. In Revelation chapter 17, we see the apostate mother of harlots church who is filled with a mouthful of profession by having no corresponding works to attend to her lip service. Her works are vile and represented as a disobedient commandment-breaking whore. She commits fornication and adultery with the kings of the earth while professing to love Jesus and to be the true church. But yet she has shed the blood of prophets and saints and has deceived the nations by her sorceries. She is involved with witchcraft and thus is corrupted with her Babylonian ties in paganism and of idolatry. She is seen as changing the commandments of God into the commandments of men. The Vatican removed the second commandment, which forbids image worship, and then they divided the tenth commandment in order to preserve the number. Then they changed the seventh day Sabbath commandment from the last day of the week to the first day of the week in order to pay homage to Satan through the office of popery on the day of the sun. Hence, Sunday worship, which was for pagans to honor their sun god. The deceptions of this woman riding the beast is interpreted as a whorish church who is in control of the nation which she has risen out of. What nation has a church and state connection? The Vatican is the only church as seen in the world who governs the nation she came out of. She is also the very church which the kings of the earth must visit or be visited by her. Her connection is seen as a fornicator. She is not connected with the king of the universe, but connected with the kings of the earth, and thus she is the mother of harlots. She has daughters who are like her as well. They are politically connected with the kings of the earth, her doctrines, her teachings, her traditions, and her commandments of men. Any church on earth who has any ounce of her fingerprint stamped upon their church, they are connected with her in some shape or form or another, and are unfaithful to the Son of God, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. The mother of harlots even admits to her fornication, where she says, While the Pope is the ruler of the world, all the emperors and all the kings and all the princes and all the presidents of the world are as these altar boys of mine. And the Bible even gives away her appearance. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color.
and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And the Apostle John in the book of Revelation also goes on to say how he saw, saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Truly, from the birth of Popery to present time, it is estimated by careful and credible historians that more than 50 millions of the human family have been slaughtered for the crime of heresy by Popish persecutors and an average of more than 40,000 religious murders for every year of the existence of Popery to the present day. Of course, the average number of victims yearly was vastly greater during those gloomy ages when Popery was in her glory and rain deposit of the world, and it has been much less since the power of the popes has diminished to tyrannize over the nations and to compel the princes of the earth by the terrors of excommunication, interdiction, and deposition to butcher their heretical subjects. The faithful and true word of God says that this woman and beast and with the kings of the earth they would receive power one hour with the beast in the end to kill off all Christians during the enforcement of her mark because those true and faithful Christians to the Lord Jesus Christ will be at war with Satan and his institutions on this planet if they will not comply with the Vatican beast's agenda in causing all the world to wonder after the beast and receive his mark and worshiping Satan. The Vatican beast clearly says Sunday is our mark or authority. The church is above the Bible and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Many in her bloody path in the past had received death because they would not rest when others kept Sunday, for they declared it to be the holiday in law of Antichrist. The founder of Protestantism, Martin Luther, even said, I feel great liberty in my heart, for at last I know the Pope is Antichrist and that his throne is that of Satan himself. Today, millions of Bible-believing, commandment-keeping Christians are sounding the trumpet and exposing the sins of this Vatican whore and proclaiming it with a plain, Thus saith the Lord, The Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath which he calls my holy day which he specifically said remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Lord says of these professed Christian churches, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. This Vatican harlot church, which is full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication, her location is also revealed. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The Vatican beast even proclaims, It is within the city of Rome, called the city on seven hills, that the entire area of Vatican state proper is now confined. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sowest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Many people, multitudes, and nations, and tongues continue till this day to visit this Vatican whore. She has billions of followers who adhere to her doctrines and teachings, traditions, and the commandments of men. Soon this Vatican beast system will be allowed by God to test and to try the entire world with who they are going to worship. They are once again going to bring back the inquisition of the old days and they will try to slaughter all the world who will not bow down to this harlot beast Sunday laws system. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet 
but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The Vatican says this organization proposes in every possible way to aid in preserving Sunday as a civil institution. Our national security requires the active support of all good citizens in the maintenance of our American Sabbath. Sunday laws must be enforced. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The prophet John even saw in the last days. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Soon this Vatican beast global world system will be established and all the world will be tested to see who they will worship. They will either be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, the Pope, where they are going to try to force the entire world to pay homage and worship him. And those that do not want to worship him, they will not be able to buy or sell in this system as their points will be removed from their cards and their ability will be shut down and thus they will not be able to participate in the world's economy. In Bible prophecy, the forehead represents the place where our brain is contained. Our brain is where all judgments, choices, and decisions are made with our God-given free will to do so. We receive the mark of the beast in our mind by choosing to worship the Pope on his Sunday, and the hand represents our ability to either work or to be forced against our will. So if we choose with our minds to worship God on his seventh day Sabbath and reject the commandments of men, they will thus then try to force us against our will by taking us by the hand. And those who will not receive the mark of the beast in the forehead or the hand, the Bible says will be put to death. The Vatican beast goes on to say, the doctrines of the Catholic Church are entirely independent of Holy Scripture. They also proclaim, The Bible was not intended to be a textbook of Christian religion. They even admit how they are the new Babylon. This global new world order system of the Vatican will have their hour with the kings of the earth soon. Soon, when Satan appears as the final Antichrist, the greatest pretender who will claim to be the Christ will pronounce a blessing on all the world who will keep Sunday worship holy, who will keep the day of the sun Sunday worship, which he instituted through his Catholic Church. The true Protestants, the true protesters will not bow to this false Christ in the end who has changed the Sabbath day of the Lord into Sunday, which honors popery above God which calls forth all to worship the beast and his image. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. In the end, this harlot beast will be destroyed, and all that love her will be destroyed with her, for following in her footsteps of unrighteousness who has taught the world to hate the law of God and the government that governs this universe. The kingdoms of this earth will soon be destroyed when all is finished, and the time of trouble begins with the seven last plagues that will punish her and the inhabitants that have rejected God and his kingdom through the breaking of his law. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And when that last trumpet shall sound, the Bible says, and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. 
but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Soon the judgments of God are going to fall on Satan's kingdoms and destroy this Vatican beast institution, the mother of harlots and the abominations of this earth. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth.